Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. In the last video, we had just fitted the 57 tooth sprocket and we were about to fit the electronic ignition to see if it still fired the spark. Well, here it is all fitted. This is the electronic ignition. Nothing really fancy about that. It's just something we've used in previous videos. Boyer Branston to our own kind of um, plate in here with a couple of magnets on. So having tested that, it works really well. We get a nice big fat spark there while we're cranking the engine with the decompressor open. And when we drop the decompressor, we still get a nice big fat spark, both on the compression stroke and also on the exhaust stroke because it's a wasted spark. So that was running really well. And then Bob says, tell you what, I'm not up to much. Why don't I machine the bigger sprocket and we'll fit that as well. You know, we've bought it, we've paid for it, we might as well use it. So I'm kind of in tune with that logic. So Bob goes away and machines the large sprocket and there it is on the bike. And it is this enormous thing, 65 teeth. So we tried that as well. We made an, a, a larger chain and fitted it all up. Uh, and we found that that worked just as well. We didn't lose that much speed. It's a little bit slower, obviously, because we're reducing the drive further. Uh, but it bowls the engine over um without straining too much one of the things that we did notice there's a little bit of flex in this plate here so what i'm going to do i'm going to take this plate off get it scanned in and then just get a a, a fresh one sort of laser cut in four mil steel and that'll make that a lot more rigid there's enough room for that there so there's there's no problem but what we found was that in fitting this sprocket we came across some unexpected things so the first thing is that the uh, original breather hose the hot the, the great big uh, goodrich hose didn't quite fit in here it wouldn't fit between the sprockets it's quite quite a big chunky thing so we had to reimagine the breather assembly now i've used household plumbing fittings and made an adapter and i'm not quite sure whether i really like that or i hate it uh, on the one hand, it's neat. It's a nice line. You know, the line follows the engine. It's part of the engine, clearly. Um, and it's out of the way. It's tucked in. It's got a one-way valve incorporated at the top. Uh, but on the other hand, it's it's central heating bits. And does it look a bit like your plumbing? So I don't know. What, what, what What's your view? What do you think? But in order to make that, it was relatively quite complex. On the bench... I have my little black book. Now, when I was a young man, young lad, this little black book or the equivalent would be full of young girls' phone numbers and probably a sign of age now. It's full of uh, bushes and spaces and dimensions and all that kind of stuff and little sketches. Now, I needed to go back to the book because I wanted to refresh my ailing memory what thread that was for this adapter that we made to put the Goodrich hose onto the breather and make room for our homemade one-way valve. Uh, now, I could have got the version is out and I could have got the thread gauges out and measured it but I knew I'd got it written down in my little black book and there it is inch by 20 turns per inch now I thought about butchering this you know coming into the side uh, perhaps putting a, a flat on and a thread and taking a pipe out to, to get a nice neat fitting but I decided in the end to leave that alone because it took a bit of work and it's a nice looking thing and you never know at some point we might want to go back and use this Goodrich hose instead of the copper pipe but I'm not sure about this now because it, it was never quite straight it didn't follow the lines of the frame so so I'm not um, too annoyed about having to delete that from the bike so that fitting needed to be made first quarter BSP is a standard plumbing fitting and then we were looking at the one-way valves and I had an idea I found a ball bearing that fitted inside here, but wouldn't go round the bend. Um, it was effectively a one-way valve. Air could come out, lift the ball bearing off the seat here and go round the outside of it. But when you try and uh, suck that way, uh, the ball bearing would be pulled onto the seat by the increased pressure on this side. And, and it wasn't possible. So we'd actually made a one-way valve that was really elegant. Eloquent, elegant, elegant, that's the word, with a, with a ball bearing that would just rattle up and down there. 
Uh, however, <laughs> when I tried it, there's that much volume of air that gets uh, pushed out with each revolution. This ball bearing shot up there and it shot right up and it whacked the bottom of the kayak. I thought I was going to put a hole in the kayak. Realised I'd actually inadvertently made uh, a very difficult to aim and overly complicated ball bearing gun. Um, so that wasn't that wasn't to be. So I went to the local hardware shop. There's a very nice guy called Curl who works there and I was trying to explain what I was trying to do and uh, have you got any fittings that might be able to help me make a one-way valve and um, he said, why don't you just buy a one-way valve? So, yeah, okay. So that there is a standard one-way valve and it works really well. I think it's intended for fluid because it's a central heating system thing, but it's a little arrow one for the direction. You can blow through it one way relatively easily, but it doesn't allow you to, to suck through the other way. So I fitted that, fitted it all up, um, and I think it looks all right. Um, however, however, when it's fitted, um, it's harder for the starter motor to turn the engine i think having to just push through that extra bit of resistance and not being able to um raise the piston without creating a vacuum it just slows the starter motor just enough with this sprocket to stop it sparking um, on the compression stroke it does on the exhaust but not on the compression stroke so we are going to have to go back and fit the original dunlop sprocket this one here, almost back where we started, but it's not a big job. You know, we've got the chain cut to size. We've got uh, four bolts to do, and then uh, we just press the button, wire up the electronic ignition, and see if it works. So that's the next job on the list, but it's been a bit of a mission to get to this point. And it's getting a bit late, so um, I'm probably going to go in now because it's getting a bit chilly as well. But I would imagine that at some point tomorrow I will do that and just verify that everything works. And as long as I get a spark at uh, top dead centre on the compression stroke after I've dropped the decompressor with the uh, black smaller 57.2 sprocket, that will be it. That will be the starting solution completely finished apart from that. Uh, slightly thicker plate to fit when that arrives so i'm calling that well no i'm not calling it if i call it now i'm tempted fate but yeah let's call it now let's assume that um we do get a big fat spark and i'm calling that done so that's it for today as usual thank you for watching more updates will follow